Hey, I'm Erica. And I'm Jules. Most people have at least one thing that they can't or won't eat. Yeah, we're definitely like that. We started this podcast to talk about the gluten-free food industry. Like new products and some of the stories behind your favorite brands. And living life with a specialty diet and also some important healthcare topics. Since we're basically both broken inside. You had me at eat. everyone hello welcome to another episode of you had me eat we had some funny business going on before we recorded so jules always Um, opens with a good laugh a good chuckle trying to get it out first (laughs) we call that getting out our wiggles we tell pigeons time to get your wiggles out before we go to bed Uh uh-huh that way she's not a crazy person um no i feel like she's like a year and a half Maybe two years. I don't know. Yeah, a year and a half. So I feel like we should probably, um, she'll be out of her kitten phase, you know, a couple of years from now. So then we'll yeah. have, a, have a good night's sleep after that. Sure. I actually am a couple just of years. hearing one of my cats right now howling at a, a, at a uh, bird out the window. So yeah, you may be listening to that for a bit. You may hear Pigeon yelling at my door because I'm not letting <laughs> her in. So checks out. see. Uh, yeah, so sure. we had we had two major major events yeah. in the past well, week. Mm-hmm. Well, let's so lead major. off with the most major, which was that I, you're looking it's looking a bit older, Erica. So old, <laughs> you can see my gray in just a tad bit more yeah. after. No. Yeah, I celebrated. Welcome to the club. Big birthday. Big yes, 40. you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Woo ha! Mm. Woo yeah. woo! Yeah. yeah. How you feeling? Fine. I don't know. I was dreading it and now I'm, I'm just trying to look on the bright side and embrace it. And maybe my forties are going to be my best decade yet. So we'll see. Of course they will be. You're going to be living your best life. Yeah. Live in the dream. So yeah. Um, I'm just like looking forward to, um, having some dinners with friends and stuff. It's, uh, my birthday fell on a Tuesday. So Tuesday night is when I do bottle babies. So I spent my birthday, uh, smelling like bleach and cat food, which is really <laughs> my two favorite smells. Um, mm-hmm. So it was good. We had a you're doing a, what you love, so that's good. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy bottle baby season right now. The busiest we've ever been in April. Um, so yeah, I spent my time volunteering until like eleven at night, and they're like, "Happy birthday!" As we're all just like dragging, <laughs> yeah, lots of puppies, lots of kittens, and I am just like happy to not be dealing with that right now. Yeah. Well, happy birthday to you. Thank you. Also, happy birthday, Jesus. No, that's not what happens on Easter. I don't know. It's been a long time <laughs> since Catholic school. If you saw Saturday Night Live on Saturday, that actually was what the uh, Donald Trump impersonator kept saying was what oh, no. was about. <laughs> that's so uh, funny. I didn't even see it. And that's what he kept saying. I did saying. not He's see like, it. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm like, I don't yeah, think that's what funny. it is. Nope, uh, not at all. Yeah. So Passover but, yeah. and Easter happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not celebrate Passover this year. Um, and I wasn't going to celebrate Easter, but then we got a last minute invite to Matt's family who are religious and celebrate Easter. And so we did a big Easter shindig at their house. And um, I did not crack open my Haggadah and I didn't do any Passover stuff. And I No Seders? No. It's Seders a very weird part. year. I know. And like... I don't think I could have squeezed it in even if I wanted to, because this month has been a train wreck, but, um, yeah, it's kind of weird to like not buy any of the matzah or any of the, um, the traditional Seder stuff that I make. Hmm. Yeah. Sad kind of, you know, you can make matzah other times of the year. I can also buy matzah anytime and make matzah pizza. So Mm -hmm. no, I don't think that's worth it. Actually. I wouldn't recommend that, but really, I love it. No, not when you can make really good gluten-free pizza. Yeah. I wouldn't I make mean, matzo yes. pizza. Well, when no. you have your crust, you can make good gluten-free pizza. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, well, did you anyway. did you make stuff for Easter? Because you celebrate I with did. your family, right? Yes. Yes, I did. I have a very long list of things that I'm told to make every year, and <laughs> and I and you know I like I like doing that. But um, it was funny because on Saturday. I tore myself away from the computer and um, it was such a beautiful day here that I, um, I walked with a friend uh, for six miles and then I um, gardened. So I, 
Uh, oh, normally we walk close to seven. So it was an abbreviated walk. Um, yeah, my bestie and I walk every Saturday or Sunday. We do a power walk and it's like power walk slash therapy. <laughs> yeah. Get it all yeah. out. And, um, and so I came back in the door, drank some water, walked right back out the door and I dug in the dirt and gardened um, until 730 at night. Gave myself Whoa. a purple tunnel in my wrist like it was exhausting but it was like it was power gardening therapy for jewels that day i just needed it i just needed to like dig in the dirt and, yeah uh, so then on sunday i was flipping exhausted and i had to bake all day like came home from church we went to early church and then i just had to bake 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 and um and I baked for like five hours and oh then went to, you know, Easter with our family. And I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's just like, can this weekend be done so I can start my work week? <laughs> you know, it's just, it was one of those things, but, um, yeah. what did you bake? Okay. So I made, um, well, I had posted last week. I don't know if you saw, I posted like this, this thing where I just said like, um, in the, my, this, my mom's impossible, um, coconut pie is something that I always have to bring mm -hmm. to Easter. What's something that you always have to bring to Easter? And I guess my sister-in-law saw that because she texted me oh, like, no. <laughs> right after that. And she was like, oh my God, if, if you have to bring your carrot cake, if you don't bring your carrot cake, my friends will never talk to me again because at Easter, we always do it at her house. And she didn't she comment gets on my social media, but she promptly texted me right after that, like, not your coconut pie, your carrot cake. And it, I had, I had just been at a baby or yeah, a bridal shower the week before. And my niece was there and she was like, you have to bring your coconut pie. And then, so I posted that and she was like, and my sister-in-law was like, you have to bring your carrot cake. Like, so I have this list of things. Everyone's like, you got to bring this, that, and the other thing. So I had to make the coconut pie and the carrot cake and then got to frost the carrot cake, got to decorate the carrot cake. Anyway, I, uh, and then I had to, I always have to bring the deviled eggs. You gotta bring the deviled eggs. I don't even like making deviled eggs, but somehow I got stuck with the bringing deviled eggs years and years and years ago. I got stuck bringing the deviled eggs with this thing. And so I had to do that too. It's so much work. Yes. It just takes a lot of time. And, and the thing about deviled eggs that everyone hates is peeling the deviled eggs. And then I remembered. I opened my press dun, box dun, dun. from International Housewares or what Inspired Home Show. The Inspired Show. Home yeah. Show. I think, How many times have they changed we changed the name? This? I can't do it. And I knew we said we weren't going to do this. We weren't going to talk about housewares anymore. I didn't agree to that. So I know I did only not agree me, to that. Apparently, it was only me. So yeah, you only can, you can talk about so whatever I you am going to talk about this because I opened my press box and dun, 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 look what I found. Yeah. It's it's a gadget and it's called the neg. And for all of you all who are listening and not watching right now on this podcast, because that's what podcasts are, they're listening. They're not listening and watching, but we now are on YouTube as well. So I'm going to show the people on YouTube. This is a gadget of the first degree. This looks like a very unassuming gadget. It's like, um, it really you does put, it, you put it, like it a beta fish in it. <laughs> It looks kind of cheap. Like, yeah. It's, it looks very cheap. And it looks like one of those things you'd get at PetSmart with a betta fish yep, in it. With the betta fish. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like this little cup with a lid and you just put the lid on it. And what you do is you put a little bit of water in it and you put a hard boiled egg in it and you put the lid on the top and you shake it vigorously. And we have a video of this because I was pretty darn skeptical about how this was really going to work out. And I made my daughter do it and I made my stepson do it. And they, neither one of them was interested in playing along until they did it once. And then they were like, do you have more? All right, we're going to try out this new product I got at Expo. Can't be easy, right? Can't be. Can't be this easy to peel a hard boiled egg. Okay, that's ridiculous. What do you think, Jack? We did it. Even though I can do it. Because <laughs> this is fun. Because once you shake it vigorously, the shell just comes right off. Like, no picking, no nothing. It is just, whoop, 
and the shell comes right off. And so I actually made extra deviled eggs this year for Easter because this was so dang easy. You had so much fun. I did not, so but it was it easy. <laughs> they had fun. I thought it was easy. So it doesn't take the shell off? No. What happens is the water gets between the broken shell and the hard boiled egg part of it, and it just slides off. Hmm. You'll see in the video. Okay. It is it is like sublimely simple and easy. And I think it. what happened was, the, and I interviewed these people at the home show, they studied what was done on an industrial scale. And that's how mm -hmm. they do it on an industrial scale. It was with water and this aggressive shaking. And they're like, huh, we should be able to do this. Anyway, it's called the neg. Super simple. And guess what? Dad, if you're listening, close your ears because you're getting one of these for Father's Day. He loves hard-boiled eggs. I'm totally getting him one for Father's yeah, Day. Yeah, I mean, if you're an egg lover, go for it. I wish I could because I love eggs, but I can't. Yeah. So guess what? This is the perfect segue because we are going to talk about Natural Products Expo West. We're finally into it. Yeah, thank and God. we found the craziest thing for you, listeners, at Natural Products Expo mm -hmm. West. Yeah, so this is a great segue into what this episode is actually about, and it's not just about uh, my birthday or <laughs> Jules' obsession with Houseware Show. It's actually Although about, I can uh, still talk about that if you want to. Still good about Expo <laughs> West and some really amazing vegan meat-ish alternatives. So we're not just talking about cheese. Lots of plant-based things that are out there that are not just like. I, I don't know what the best way to put this, but I'll show you. This is a good segue because this is the perfect product for all the yep. crazy things that we're going to talk about today. This is a wonder egg. <laughs> and I love a good hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs do not love me back. So it's always interesting trying to think about like, well, how can I make doubled eggs plant-based? You can't. It's so difficult. Like, I'm like, oh, do I do a just egg? But then how do I make it into that beautiful shape? And what do you I can't. put in the middle? It's not possible. Just not, not, not happening. So I met Wonder Eggs and I actually saw John Sally at the Wonder Egg booth. And he yeah. was eating it. He loves a good vegan product. John so Sally, I knew he for was all of you. It. Yeah. Listeners out there. He is always at Expo Yeah, and you don't, you can't miss him because he's what, seven foot hundred yeah. and he so is tall. vegan. And so he's always scoping out all the vegan plant-based stuff. He's been there. So if you follow year. him, he stops at the best booths and he was at Wonder Egg. So I also mm -hmm. ate a Wonder Egg and it is, it looks exactly like a hard boiled egg in half. Same texture. Same texture, which is really yeah. hard to mimic and a very similar taste. And it is made with almonds, cashews, coconut milk, and of course like konjac root and um, yeast, which is the flavoring. Um, and nutritional yeast. It, yeah. And it is delicious and so good. And they sell them at Whole Foods and they're like just an amazing product. And I'm so glad I found them. And I'm such an idiot for not getting them for Easter because the whole time I was at Easter, I was like, oh my God, I just wish I had a double egg right now. I was looking at the doubled eggs and I'm like, oh man, I want to eat one so bad. And Matt's like, do not do it. <laughs> I, do I have to live suffer. with you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, I saw on wonder eggs, uh, Instagram, we were prepping for this, this video that they had a big, like how to make deviled eggs with wonder eggs. And I'm like, Oh, I'm so dumb. I should have picked this up. It is amazing. And it is probably one of my favorite finds of all of Expo West is this yeah. like just wild, wild vegan product. It's crazy. Like I never thought that we'd be living in yeah. a time in which we'd have completely plant-based hard boiled eggs. But yeah. Yeah, we are. it's crazy. And that's why they're called Wonder Eggs. So today's uh, episode is going to be all of these sort of plant-based, vegan, gluten-free, obviously, alternatives. Um, that it, it's not just for people who are vegan. There's, you know, yeah. there's this great movement out there um, of people who are more health conscious, but also who are sustainable minded um, folks who are looking for ways to, you know, um, do Eat more be plants. less of a burden on the planet um, to uh, eat more plants. So it's not, you know, don't turn the, the show off just because you're like, hey, I'm not vegan. These are things that we're finding that are these really, really interesting companies who are coming up with alternatives that 
taste like meat or that are, um, you know, meat analogs or are other ways of enjoying things that you might um, want to investigate for yourself, even if you're not thinking, you know, you're a totally plant-based person um, for flexitarians, other people who are mm -hmm. looking for alternatives. Or, I mean, people like me who can eat eggs. Yeah. And people like me who can't eat traditional dairy, like yep. I may not be a vegan, but I will eat this stuff. And it yep. was delicious. And we're so happy with what we found. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff. What about the vegan sushi that we found at um, at Expo? And then this has been sort of a trend. There's been others that we've found lately um, that are moving into the marketplace. Vegan poke, vegan sushi. Um, a lot of people have just been like, I would never eat sushi, even though I eat meat. Like that doesn't interest me, you know. Or yeah. people who are vegans who think I can't have sushi. This is a this is going to be a trend that we're going to be seeing more and more. But this and it's company, weird. It, it's it, so is, weird. It's, 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 it is mind blowing. But this company is really cool because, you know, you're going to be able to find these um, more and more in restaurants, but um, this company called Conscious with a K is um, now selling vegan sushi and vegan poke that you can buy frozen and bring it into your home and you can prepare this at your house. It's like buying this and saying, hey, sushi night at home, it, it's vegan, it's plant-based and it, you know, we just have it here. We don't have to order out sushi, which is very, very cool. And, and um, it's, it's not pretty just exciting. to to be to clarify. This is not a veggie roll. No, because you can make any sushi yeah. vegan mm -hmm. if you're just like, yeah, I just want the cucumber roll or the veggie roll, and you're like, oh my god, how boring. This is legit, like a poke bowl, a California roll. Like they have all of the sushi rolls mm -hmm. that you would normally get just made vegan and yep. and the insides are a but like con konjac root and like some starches yeah and pea protein and pea protein <laughs> yeah Yeah, I don't know what the price points are on these. I imagine it's I'm sure it's going to be wildly yeah. expensive. Like, yeah. let's be real. <laughs> I mean, the Wonder Eggs, even though eggs are expensive, they're yeah. going to be much more expensive than real yeah. eggs because of all the stuff in the process. <laughs> and the R&D that went in, how many years oh, yeah. that went oh into my God, it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, so speaking but... about other things that I was very surprised at finding, there was a food truck. And normally the food trucks at Expo West, we can't eat. Yeah. Even if they're gluten-free product, they like add all this stuff that it's like, why would you put it on a bread? Ugh, but that's another rant for another I day. Know. But I know. Some people just don't get it. But yeah, you'd think food. that they would. You'd think that they would at Expo. You'd think they'd no, get they it. don't. Get it. Year after year, I've been like, oh, I'm going to get gluten at the show. Cool. Um, dairy yeah, foods. And it's not something I would ever eat at this food truck because, again, I've been glutened far too many times at people who are just idiots as far as like, let's put gluten on a yeah. gluten-free product and then still say it's gluten-free. These people were doing teriyaki, uh, teriyaki chicken things uh, with like like a vegan ranch dip and then skewers of chicken, but it is not chicken. It is Daring Foods, which is soy. And uh, I'm like, oh God, I bet this is gross because I am very judgmental when it comes to meat alternatives that are also You're, gluten free. No, just call a spade a spade. You're just judgmental. I'm just a judgmental person. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ugh, whatever. Cool. Let's see. And so I tried it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. And I was really surprised because I've seen it at Target and they have a breaded gluten-free chicken and they have Cherokee chicken that's coming out and they have all these other chicken pieces, but it just looks like a weird chicken breast. And I'm like, this can't be good. And I'm like, this is so good. And it's to the point where I would just buy it. I mean, because keep it in the freezer. You never know when you're going to have it. And again, it's soy. So if you're soy sensitive, like 
clearly this is not for you, but I thought it tasted delicious. And if you're vegan and gluten-free to finally have like a, especially if you are vegan for an ethical reason and you're just like, listen, I kind of miss chicken and I miss chicken teriyaki. Like this is such a great find. Mm -hmm. I really love their food truck. We have a, a short video of their food truck, but it was so good. And I was very thankful because I was very hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? And that probably made you like it even more. Cause you're yeah, so but you just like, never go to the grocery it. store. I yeah. guess I just don't gravitate to me. Yeah. Cause lots. you're not like a, Ooh, I can't wait to have a chicken pop. No, up. that's not actually chicken. No, no, not no. Me. But see for I me, will... I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not me. However, along those same lines, we have to talk about mushrooms because mushrooms are the next big thing. Stop I mean, they've been it. the next big thing for several I know. years. They have been, but mushroom, and we're going to talk about Everywhere. probably, we're probably going to hit mushrooms in every single episode that we talk about in this expo, like overview, because they were literally in everything. They were in coffee. They were in cookies. They were in sauces. They were in, um, I mean, I, I, they were literally in everything, but they were the star of the show in meat analogs and the nowhere mm -hmm. more, more heavily, um, prominent than, than in the meat analogs. And, um, one company and the name is meaty M E A T I. They actually won a next TD for their product and, um, they had a food truck as well. And they were also inside and I don't know. Did you even get to taste them? No. Okay. So meaty, uh, also had, um, breaded chicken and then they had cutlets and they also had like steaks and they they're literally it's 95% um, mushroom root or mycelium. And it, it's a crazy thing when you start like looking into this and how they do it. I mean, they, they grow, <laughs> they grow the mycelium in these vats. Like they do, like, it's, it's like a, um, <laughs> your face you're like Whoa. it's just they, like it's, i they, like it's like seeing how anything is made right i know like you definitely don't want to see how chicken's made because that's disgusting and you'll turn vegan and have to eat this mycelium but yes. uh, it's However. just so weird because <laughs> mushrooms are just like like a like a fungus like we grow it in our garden when we try not to and it's like I oh know. no we're I eating all of this now but have you seen the fabulous fungi have you seen that documentary? No, and I, it's in my <gasps> You queue. need to see it. I oh, know. You, it it's, it's just like the photography, like all of it yeah. is amazing. You need to just watch it. It's fantastic. But um, mushrooms are not going away. In fact, they're they're going to be coming up roses everywhere because they, whether you're talking about eating the the, the actual fruit, the the mushroom that we know and love, like or not, um, that you see growing and everywhere. And the fruit is like the mushroom. The mushroom itself, right? The cap, you, okay. right? Um, okay. or the, the mycelium, the, the root part of it, the, that, um, is the, what's in something like meaty and, and I'm, I'm by far not the mushroom expert here, but just the top line answer to what I'm talking about in terms of what's in something like meaty is that, you know, they are able to sustainably grow this food in a matter of days, which is what's mind blowing. And what is really, really, really interesting for people who are looking at what's the next gen of food to feed people. And, mm -hmm. and this could be, you know, you're looking at, you know, an answer to, to starvation and to, um, you know, uh, people who are needing um, a, a fiber rich, protein rich, micronutrient rich food source around the world that does not, you know, um, put out all sorts of, you know, bad things into the air and the environment, yeah. right? Yeah. They're, it's they grow this, yeah. right. They, and they grow this food with very little input. They, they literally add like sugar to it and it grows in a matter of days in these ranches that are inside and it's a clean environment, very much what, like, um, where you would imagine what, um, making beer, that's what it looks mm -hmm. like, those beer vats and things. So it's a, it's a clean environment and it kind of just sustains itself once you add it, like the sugar to it for it to grow. Um, and it is a texture, the root itself, when they, they take it out and then they process it, the texture of it looks, feels, and tastes when they add, you know, some seasonings to it. Um, it 
tastes like meat or chicken. And it's flipping unbelievable, which is why people are going nuts for it and why it's like yeah. winning awards and why people are investing in it like crazy. Mm -hmm. This is the next gen answer for food just across the board Although, for our planet. I think that we should talk about it. And no, I don't want to delve into this because this is like an hour long discussion. Yeah. But like the growth media that people always talk about, yes. like some of this is grown in wheat, some of this is grown in oat. Like we have to yeah. also note, like while the growth media may contain gluten, the actual mushroom itself does not. It just is grown on there. Like yeah, so none of it's grown in wheat. Um, some and and again, this we probably need to have an entire like episode talking yeah, to some with experts expert? about this. Yes. Cause I'm and, not one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who am I? Um, but some of them are the mycelium are grown on rice. Some of them are grown on oats and then some of them you're just eating the fruiting body. So it doesn't matter what it's grown on, but the mycelium itself, if you're eating the mycelium, then there's an issue. Some people are saying, you know, well, are you eating the mycelium that is still has some of whatever the growth medium is? So is that the oat or the, the rice? And that's where the issue comes in. And that's then, weird, man. I don't want to talk about this anymore because I, <laughs> we need an expert. We need yeah. to phone a friend. We, we, need a, and... we need a fungi expert, a fun we fungi do. expert. Yeah, no, we do. We absolutely because, do. Uh, but, but I don't want to scare people into not no. eating some of this stuff, but mm -hmm. like, Especially, right. if, um, I mean, hopefully all these, these places, obviously they're going to test for gluten in their final Absolutely. product and, or and get certified and, gluten free. And when you talk to somebody like Meaty, they're saying, you know, we are absolutely testing and we're in the process of getting mm -hmm. certified gluten free. True. We but. absolutely hope that they get certified and, you know, we look for that in the future. Um, but there are other companies, um, that use rice as their growth medium. And then there are mm -hmm. other companies that, uh, it's a different model and they use it for different things. Um, but there are other companies that are using just the fruiting body and that's a different mm -hmm. type. They're using it for like coffees and things like that. Um, oh my God. Milk. Mushroom milk. milk. We're going to talk about that in another episode. Don't talk about it now. Okay. okay. Um, anyway, Preview. so then it wouldn't even matter Mushroom what milk. the growth medium was. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we will be discussing more of this later. We will likely have another episode just dedicated to this because it's it's not going away and and i think it's really exciting for so many reasons but anyway, anyway so many exciting ones out there you ate and a ton of them i did not because i'm really <laughs> over plant-based burgers but i will eat i it am not a because i i know because and see and unlike unlike you because i'm the type of vegetarian who does not crave nor miss mm -hmm. nor seek a meat analog I like a veggie burger that is like veggie, 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 like hit me on the face with all the, the, you know, vegetables here. I don't want it to be bleeding or anything like that with beet juice. You know, that's not, that's not the kind of thing that I want, which is one reason why I gravitate to things like the no bowl brand, the no bowl veggie burgers, which I know we, we talked about that before and you weren't familiar with I've that. I've never brand. seen it. I, no. I have followed them for years. Um, it was started by this mom. Her name's Chris Ann. Every time I come to their booth, she's like, Oh, Hey, girl. I'm like, Hey girl. Anyway, so it's, she, uh, she started it and with her, with her daughters and, um, she, she's never like made any bones about the fact that she's not trying to be like a beyond burger or whatever or thing like that. She is, yeah. she's a veggie burger, right? So it's like lentils and brown rice and quinoa and mushrooms and chickpeas whatever, and you can sort of see it in there, but it, it's a thick, it's not like it's going to fall apart kind of a burger. It's not dry. It's, I mean, it's a real burger and it's got lots of flavor to it. And she's got, um, I don't know, like four or five different, um, flavors now. And, and I, I just have always thought that her, her burgers are really good. And she just rebranded and has really nice looking packaging and everything. She's got some investment, but anyway, anyway. I'll just mention this really quickly. Hillary's, we all know that brand. Um, yeah. They, they sold, have not launched um, any new things in a while. No. And they kind of went like really in this, um, it was a nice direction in terms of, you know, trying to be really, um, inexpensive because we all know that these, burgers can get kind of expensive. Well, so this year they launched sort of a new line and it's called Prime Plants. This is not going to be the inexpensive 
you know, four <clears> pack. Or actually, actually, I think the other thing they did is they went from like three to four burgers in their boxes. I think that's what they did. Um, don't quote me on that because I didn't write that one down. Anyway, um, but the the Prime Plants is a much bigger burger and it's got a bunch more stuff and it's totally different. Um, so that's something to look for. But uh, anyway, so yeah, those that would be the on that end of the spectrum. And then the meat analog spectrum, you want to talk about um, <laughs> your favorite one that you, that you found, that whole Ming's thing. Oh, so, I mean, there is a brand, and I actually have not tried this brand, but I believe that you did, and we had both separately tried it. Mm-hmm. So um, the brand is Before the Butcher. <laughs> There's a really you had- funny video of me eating it. <laughs> Because, yeah, I just was so surprised at how good it was. It's really good. Do you even know what's in it? Because I have no idea. Yeah. Um, it's soy. I mean, checks out. I do yeah. love a good soy burger. Yeah. So soy. Um, this, before the butcher, I had like heard the name before. I had not tried it. But when we both got together and talked about our notes, she's like, did you try before the butcher? And I'm like, no, but I actually did try them because they are one of the featured products in Ming's Bings and Ming's Bings, I, um, they're inner sprouts and they're from Ming's High and he is an amazing chef who's food allergy friendly. And so that's why I initially was like, Oh, I'm going to buy this stuff. And they have, um, a couple different ones. They have like a cheeseburger one and a, um, Asian, um, edamame one. And it's like wrapped in this like rice paper wrapper. And it's almost like a, um, a crunch wrap, like a Taco Bell crunch wrap, but made with a thinner wrapper. And you make them in like the toaster oven there, the air fryer. And I've had those, they've been out for about six months in our sprouts and they're all plant-based. So even the cheeseburger is plant-based, but I never really gravitated towards that because I really like the the Asian one with adamame in it. And um, I went to their booth to see what was new and they have a whole line of breakfast wraps, which I'm like, this is so good because I, I totally need something for breakfast that's like more hearty than just like, I don't know, an oatmeal or a bagel mm-hmm. or whatever I eat. And um, they have a breakfast wrap that is their traditional like rice paper wrap or whatever. Yeah. But it has um, just egg. Love that. Which is a veggie, a veggie egg replacer that we've talked about before. It's amazing. Yep. Um, and then a sausage that is made from before the butcher. So good. And they have it in there and it's like this breakfast wrap. And it was so delicious. I sat at the booth and ate like two of them. And they have a couple different um, breakfast wraps that are all plant-based and all gluten-free and all um, free from the top allergens. Although like free from gluten and dairy. I think they obviously include they soy because yeah. they have edamame in there as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great brand that yeah. I support their mission. And I love the fact that they're doing everything, um, you know, plant-based like Mikey's has a new plant-based line too. And, um, I just love that there's like the breakfast plant-based stuff because yeah. it's really hard when all of the breakfast items have eggs in them. Yeah. As we have and dairy. About. Like, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. but the other thing about before the butcher that's unique is they have this uncut line. So you can buy like this big, I don't know, block of it. (laughs) A loaf. (laughs) A loaf of soy. Like, I don't know how to describe it because I'm not like a meat person, but like it's as if you went and bought like a big thing of ground beef or something. I don't know. And like you just do what you want to with it. So you don't have to buy Mm. like individual prepared patties. So it's less expensive that way. And then you can prepare it how you want. It's interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Like I I like it when it's like, Oh, here's a sausage patty. And then you can just make it. It's just like a lump of soy. I'd be like, "Mm." well, it's not, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as I just described it. But like, I think, I think I did not do it (laughs) justice, but I think, I think some people would appreciate the fact that they're like, Oh yeah. 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 If they're used to just cooking it the way they want to cook it, like they could have more options that way. That yeah. also comes in patties. Yeah. yeah. I was really impressed with the sausage that I had in these things. So I'd be interested if they have it in my area to try it and just see yeah. like, is this Yeah, it's really a good new. So it. Um, I think we're going to be seeing more of that because it was really good. Yeah, I would love love to get my hands on this. I mean, yeah. I think they're coming out in like June or July and I'm like, oh my gosh, I will eat them. So yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then another one was Plantasia. 
um, that we really liked the Plantasia foods. I didn't try burger. it. I don't know why you're saying we, I did not try that. Okay. Well, we means the Royal we, I oh, really okay. liked it, <laughs> we. but you liked the thousand Island dressing, right? No, I, I never no, mind. I did not try that. <laughs> She's like, you liked it. I'm like, I actually didn't because I don't know who you were with, but that person was not me. She was just with some random person that liked the dressing. She's like, yeah, you like this, right? Didn't you, Erica? No, I didn't try it. In fact, I did try another dressing with you, but we're going to talk about them in, in another other. episode. Okay, fine. Um, just skip ahead then. You didn't but I even... am really excited about the Thousand Island dressing that you think that I will really like because apparently in the past I liked it. In another planet <laughs> in which you were with me when you, you tried just, this food. You just like dressings and it was a dairy free dressing and it was good. <laughs> you know, Erica. I found this dressing her, for you, Erica. You love this dressing. You're going to love it. It's weird. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, I'll yeah, try it. Sure. I'm glad you liked it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your weird tuna because I am very excited for this journey for you. Okay. It's called Future, Future Tuna. Tuna, and I, my box got smushed in my carry-on. But um, um, yeah, all my boxes <laughs> look horrible because I'm yeah, like 50 pounds on Southwest Airlines. I yeah. know, I know. But you got to make the most of that free. You box. do. Anyway, Future Tuna, and um, yeah, so it's like it it comes in a box, so it's not like refrigerated or anything like that, and it's um, soy, uh, but also pea protein and chickpea and all that, and it's. Um, it's actually, they have, they have other products too, but this is the one that I was most interested really in. really interested to have you try this because I love tuna and um, the only other plant-based tuna that I love was Good Catch. They're so good, mm -hmm. um, but that comes moist already. <laughs> that is a pre-moistened well, you know tuna flake. I'm assuming that it's dry. Let me see. If not, you just, this has gone completely bad from being in your suitcase for <laughs> so long. Hold on, let me open it. I have to just cut this and I have to do it over again. Oh no. No, it's not dry. It comes like this. It's squishy. You don't add water to oh. it. Okay. There you go. Huh. I really just want you to open that and take a bite. I don't know. If I, can. I mean, I don't want to peer pressure you, but I'm saying I think the audience would really like for you to take a <laughs> bite of this future tuna. Ugh. All right. I'm going to have to, like, bite it. <laughs> okay, it smells like tuna. It definitely smells like tuna. <laughs> Looks like tuna. Mm hmm. Now you had tuna recently. You eat fish. You're a pescatarian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. So you know what tuna tastes like. Mm -hmm. Tuna's not my favorite. I mean, I would make a salad with that. It wouldn't be like, okay. you know. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so it gets your seal of approval or like, yeah. Eh. Okay. I mean, I, I would never say that's not like, it's got the texture I mean, it's, I really yeah, I mean, am yeah. wondering how they get the taste of tuna in there. Cause that's such a, a fishy taste is never really good unless it's fish. So it I'm has curious. natural aroma. <laughs> that's, that's, an, that's one of the ingredients is natural. I want aroma. you to never say those words again. Oh God. I have my glasses off and I thought it said powdered rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Future yeah. is just rabbit. <laughs> it's, you know, what there's they no say about tuna. rabbit. There's no tuna. There's just rabbit. Uh, they say about rabbit is it's the tuna of the, the tuna land. of tomorrow. There's a bunch of stuff I can't pronounce. Oh, cool. But it does contain soy. <clears throat> okay. I mean, yeah. And now it's my office smells something. like tuna. Thank you very much. Okay. So here's my next question. If you put it out for the cats... <gasps> are they going to eat it? Ooh, or are they going to be like, this let's is not it. tuna? Let's try it. Want me to try it? Obviously. Like at this moment? Me yeah. Try it? I have to, I have to go open my door. 
Let me get a try. Hold on just a second. Wait, are cats allowed to eat all those things? It's just soy sure. and beans. Why not? There's vegan cats. I hope our cats don't eat it. Lay out. would make for good. Lay out. Oh, 100 percent they are scarfing this up. I mean, just feed them a little bit. Don't feed uh, them all. <laughs> I didn't give them the packet. I just gave okay. them like a little tiny little dab of it. And they're like, <laughs> is this the cat that eats anything though? Or is this just the other cat? Uh, two of them came at it. Interesting. I mean, I feel like that's the true seal of approval. <laughs> if like a cat, a cat who's like, I love tuna. <laughs> So we contact the company and say, so I gave your product to my cat and, and they the cat gave ate it two it. paws up, <laughs> two paws up. Yeah. Uh, so we opened this, um, future tuna to see whether or not it was cat approved and <laughs> it is, it's cat approved. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like that's such a better opinion than like a human <laughs> that's like, yeah, it could be tuna. But if the cats are fooled, I feel like that is. Yeah, like, would you mind taking this out of my office and putting it like in a because it smells like, like, <laughs> like the cat. The cats are like, oh, licking their lips. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> they are oh all over God, this I future tuna. Come here. Come here. <laughs> they're loving oh it, and they're like do, 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 following her out of the room with the tuna. With the tuna, mm -hmm. oh, it's not all tuna. Are you going to break it to them or are you just going to like not tell them? No, never. I would never break their poor spirits. Yeah. That's so nice. Well, I'm glad that you did that little trial run because I honestly, <laughs> I, that makes me feel better about the future tuna and the future of, uh, the future of our tuna, which is not sustainable. No. But I'm glad future tuna is. Yeah. Which is sure. just rabbit. <laughs> which just is just rabbit. rabbit. And the best part is my glasses are on my head the whole time. So I could have just, you know, I was really interested <laughs> if you're going to notice that you're like, I don't have my glasses. I'm like, Oh, you do though. You do. You do. Absolutely. Have your glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the last thing that I want to <laughs> talk about, cause we've moved on from the cat trial portion of this podcast <clears> is, um, and this is going to be apparently the longest episode of our lives because one of the biggest things that we wanted to share with you is um, Daya Foods. And we had an amazing interview with the CEO, adorable. And their press person was so kind and so nice. And we were able to sit down for like a very long time and talk about their new innovations for cheese. And it's I think you're going to um, be really interested in what they're talking about um, because not only is it a cheese innovation, but it is a plant-based innovation because a lot of their flatbreads are now including a plant-based chicken and a plant-based um, sausage for their vegan pizzas because normally like, you know, we just have a cheese or a margarita or whatever. But um, this idea of capturing this, um, meat analog in it. So they had a, a, a meatless pepperoni before that was really their first, I think, trial into like the meat analog. And now they have the plant-based chicken, which I think is really unique. Um, oh, they had a bacon. Was it a yeah, bacon? It was bacon, like a bacon ranch something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something bacon. Um, and, uh, and you are not like loving it because you don't like meat analogs, mm -hmm. yeah. but I'm like, oh, I'll take a fake. Yeah. You had my piece too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was good. And um, their new flatbreads look great. Um, they're way better than, you know, I think Day has had so many revolutions over the years. Yes. And they truly are so much better than they were because I think a lot of vegans are like, oh, I remember them. I'm like, no, 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 totally different company at this yeah. point. And totally I think different the cheese. best part of it, the whole thing is we established while I was there that I was like the first person ever to eat their cheese in 2008. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know the that restaurant. brand yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. for so long. And to see them have so many changes in their formulations and really grow with the vegan market, because when you first had them, the vegan market was nowhere near where it is. I mm -hmm. mean, like it's just, yep. it's doubled in the past like five years. I mean, it's an insane how many brands are out there now doing vegan cheeses and vegan whatever. Um, but I am so excited for you to listen and or watch this video with the CEO of Daya. I think you'll really enjoy it. 
So that, what a great question. Why did I join DEA almost uh, four years ago? I, I was looking to do something in, in my career um, that was very focused on uh, a purpose-driven company. And as I started to learn more about DEA, I realized that this, this company not only has been doing some extraordinary things in the plant-based space, but has the potential to change how the world eats for the long term. Um, so we created a purpose that is really about pioneering plant-based breakthroughs that delight people and planet. Um, so that is fundamentally why why I joined Dea. I'm a flexitarian. I, yeah, I, I was before flexitarian became kind of cachet. Yeah. I, I always said I'm like a plant-based explorer. That's great. So Me too. I'm Me very too. curious. Um, I'm very conscious of of how I eat, and I've got two young daughters, and you know, wanting to set the right example for them for their lifetime. So I'm uh, very I'm very curious, and 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 I experiment probably sometimes even adventurous when I travel around the world. Uh, I'm kind of that person who's, what is that? I've, I've never seen that before. Okay, I want to try that. I, I will start for, for those listening with an apology. And uh, many consumers and customers at this show have, have talked to me about why we don't have ice cream anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have some... The worst is when you roll something out and then you take it back. Yes, and it was a great, a great yeah. product. The reason I bring that up to start is our, our company knows what we can do best and we can and, and for the long run. And this is about cheese and cheese forward foods. So we very much focus the company on cheese and cheese forward foods, which is really meals um, led by pizza and right now mac and cheese. So what we're what we're featuring on the pizza side is is the first uh, all of our products are free from the top nine allergens, including gluten. Some people have a hard time thinking when they think about pizza going, it's gluten-free. All our, all our pizzas are free from the top, all our products, period, are free from the top nine allergens. And certified. And, gluten and certified gluten-free. We're super excited with our two pizzas here. One is a flatbread and one is uh, a circuit, circle pizza, a regular pizza. To actually launch the first plant-based, soy-free, gluten-free, allergen-friendly chicken. Um, and we've got kind of a barbecue theme happening, and these are going to be launching across uh, retailers throughout 2023, starting uh, very shortly. So we're super excited. So we're featuring that on the on the pizza side, and then I don't know if you want to pan over to the, you can see the pizzas uh, as this gentleman, Real TV again, crosses in front of you. But you get a, a flavor for our portfolio of flatbreads and pizzas. The, the second and and probably the the biggest communication out of over my shoulder here you can see this tent-like structure um, that is a discrete moment with key uh, suppliers and retailers who are coming by the booth to actually share some phenomenal game-changing news uh, from day on and it is about uh, next generation plant-based cheese so we have spent uh, the last four years building the largest plant-based facility of its kind in North America now in, in North in British Columbia, okay. Canada, uh, but it's the largest right across Canada in the U.S. Um, and in COVID and with all the crazy things that have happened to all of our lives, and behind the scenes where we're building that, we are. And by the way, it's LEED certified. We decided to take an old warehouse, and if you've done home renovations, you know it's probably going to be more expensive. Um, but we decided to take an old furniture warehouse and convert it into a world-class facility innovation centers, labs, manufacturing, headquarters. And we did it because it was the right thing to do for the planet. Instead of taking this facility and putting it all into landfill, we figured let's turn it into a LEED certified facility that's great for the environment for the long run, and we don't hurt the environment in the short run. While we've been doing all that, we've been focused on next generation cheese. And this cheese is now our ninth, you were saying that you've been with Dea, from since, yeah. since the beginning, and we really appreciate that. This is our ninth generation in 15 years. So we turned 15, this, so on the eve of our 15th year anniversary, we are launching our ninth generation of plant-based cheese overall, but uh, the ninth generation specifically to our shreds. <laughs> but what I can say is uh, we, are, we are using, whole, we're improving the taste and the texture in a significant way to dairy, the dairy cheese experience. 
because we're okay. we're in it for all of our consumers. We're in it for cheese lovers. Yeah. And and whether you have food allergens, whether you've chosen a lifestyle of vegan or vegetarianism, or you're just a cheese lover that wants to do right by people and planet, um, we that's our inspiration. Uh, it's in our purpose statement. Uh, I believe that we can change how the world eats. Every pound of dairy cheese that is made uses a hundred times more water than the equivalent pound of plant-based cheese. That's why we're doing this. So this next generation changes, radically changes the stretch, the melt, the creaminess of, of plant-based cheese. Uh, far superior to anything in the market and closes the gap significantly to dairy cheese. We're still, we're already working on the 2.0 version of, of what we're about to launch. There's, there will still be a, a small gap to dairy cheese, but our, our belief and our vision is that we will surpass dairy cheese because we're going to be better for you and we're going to be better for planet. So, um, this will roll out into stores in, the, in Q4, so at the, at somewhere between October to December, depending on the retailer. Um, it, we will have a new look and feel to it from, from Dea. Uh, it still will say Dea, but it's good. It, it is that big. It's that game changing that we decided to kind of reposition the visual assets, the design, the the narrative, the the, the voice, and the feel of our brand to coincide with news this big. Is it going to start with shreds or what product? Our our entire so our blocks, our sticks, okay. our slices, and our shreds All are going to be time. renovated uh, with a significant innovation. And and. If, if the listeners are thinking about uh, what, what what is it that, that you're really doing here, um, you know we are using whole food ingredients, which we always have, but we're blending whole food ingredients with kind of the art of cheese. We've reimagined how uh, to make cheese. This reimagination of how how do we do it blends whole food ingredients that we've always used, but we've introduced oats into the equation. My, my favorite product that you I can't tell you about because it's in that tent <laughs> is, is our next generation cheese. It is phenomenal how far we've come on. Taste, don't, don't texture, melt, <laughs> stretch, um, flavor. It's going to be it's going to be awesome with some protein. Um, it's it's amazing. I, you know, we, weekly I have two two young daughters, nine and twelve, um, and we we have we have pizza, plant based pizza once a week. Um, so I, I think right now my favorite day of product would have to be our pizzas. Uh, Gluten-free crust, incredible dairy-free cheese, um, and as a flexitarian, it, it is that good that I, I'm, I'm, that's my staple. That's, yeah. That is my staple. The, the plant-based chicken that we have on our, on our, that we're featuring here at the show is, is the best I've had. We, we tried many, and to do it in a soy-free way is is and incredible gluten yeah. and gluten-free is it's it's incredible so yeah i'd have to say our barbecue pizzas right now have kind of caught my eye and i've been trying them in r d labs for quite some time so um and my family is can uh, they're converted yeah. they're, they're converted to the because they, they get to sneak peek some yeah. of this at home <laughs> um, so yeah pizza, pizzas once a week and uh yeah. i think our plant-based uh, chicken pizzas with uh, with the barbecue theme will become a staple in my household all right, well, I'm Michael, I'm the CEO of Dea, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time of this crazy, crazy trade show to come over to our positive energy moment uh, here at Dea. There's, uh, there's a really good vibe here in our booth. Thank you for stopping by, spending a little time with us. This is a brand to watch. We turned 15 years old this year. We pioneered this movement 15 years ago, and on the eve of that 15th year anniversary, we're about to launch a breakthrough cheese that is going to really rock, shock your world um, and, and significantly close the gap to dairy cheese, uh, extend us from the current plant-based category options. And remember, if you remember anything, this is only the beginning. We are on a pathway to not just close the gap to dairy, but to surpass dairy because it's going to be better for you and it's going to be better for planet. So in summary, Jules, I am so impressed with all of our meat alternatives and our egg alternatives and our analogs of all these traditional um, meat, dairy, and egg alternatives that we saw on the show. I think it's one of the most innovative years for 
those plant-based alternatives. Yeah, it was definitely a theme from Expo and everyone was talking about it. People are really um, getting creative and I was excited to see all the latest products and happy to be able to share them with our listeners today. There's some great stuff out there and more to come. Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned for our next wrap-up series featuring some of the other products that we saw at Natural Products Expo West 2023. Until then, 